So the story goes that uh, the, the farmer that lives at Husafel, he was a farmer that was also a priest. They had goats or probably sheep. Uh, people started to steal sheep from each other. They put a huge stone in front of the door so nobody could pick it up. So they got a huge stone that is now the Husafel stone uh, in, in the door that is weighs uh, 400 pounds, 189 kilos. But the story goes that uh, the daughter of the priest, she was not happy with uh, her brothers got more paid than she did. So her father told her, you're gonna get paid as soon as you can pick up the stone. And she picked up the stone and one, walked one circle around the goat pin with the stone, put it back in and uh, I think she got paid after that. Stone lifting has always been big in Iceland. Basically, the more heavier stone you lift, the better spot you get on the boat and you get more money. I wish that was like that now. People have been coming here for many, many years just to come to Iceland to pick up the stone at the original, uh, original location. It's, it's really tough. And it's small. What do you think that's different here, man? I mean, there's something special about a country with 350,000 people, but you've got eight world's strongest man titles, one of the strongest men in the world alive right now. Yeah. You've got what, four CrossFit game championships mm -hmm. and, and numerous powerlifting. Like, why? Why with such a small population? The, the, only the toughest people survive here. So we're raised up with really hard conditions. I just think like everybody here just raised up with like, why not me? Like I could do it. Like we had, we see eight titles on the world's strongest man in the same gym. So yeah. like, why not me? Same thing with the girls like in CrossFit and stuff. Maybe like 10 girls in Iceland that think the same now. Like, you know, why not me? Now they got Katrin yep. and Thuri. They got all those really good girls. Not even like one, two and four and then 16. It's amazing. And they're from like, like we talked about from like the, the four minutes away from each other right i mean it's it's basically like my home you know baton rouge my town is about the same population it'd be like baton rouge putting out eight world strongest man championships yeah, it just ridiculous. doesn't make sense it just and but also like you have to think about in since the world strongest man started we probably had like 13 guys in the world strongest man total and it's almost from the same gym that's just unbelievable right and this year we had three this is my my seventh trip here and it's always it's just one of my favorite places on the planet yeah. to come and I, it, it's really hard to explain to people until we're on the ground yeah and it's just it's just something different yeah. i sat down with longtime friend peter goodmanson two-time olympian in the shot put for iceland Highland Games guy and has been a friend of mine for a number of years. He kind of directed us to the location of exactly where to find the Husfell Stone, and even though I've been there before, it's never the easiest thing to find. It's always good to, to aim for a place called Reykholt. So if you're there, you're on your right. You just keep going a little bit further. When you go to Borgones, you know, without going yeah, to yeah, Borgones, yeah. you just you take, take that right. right yeah. Yeah. You, see, you see Reykholt. Okay, that is on, really cool. On all signs. And then you continue... Then you just continue a little bit further. Uh, you can't miss it from there. Just cannot. You say that, Peter. I've been a couple times. <laughs> I, I, I feel pretty confident in it, but... <laughs> I've also... It's, it's a straight line. Okay, so through Ray Just, just stay on the, that, that road. On this one. So following our map and our loose instructions from Peter, we set out. Mark Valenti, myself, and the rest of our crew went to go give this thing a shot. Now Mark's a guy I've known through the Highland Games for years. And it's something special to be able to share a moment like this with another athlete that you've got to know. I got brought here the first time by Magnus Vermagnuson and a few other athletes. And I've managed to bring new people with me every time I've made the trip. And it's something to share that. It's something to share these moments in strength with people to help carry on the history. The history of this stone is something special. Like every strongman competition in the world right now has a Husafell carry. And that's based on this stone. This exact stone from this place. 
Now the ones they use are different, it's made of metal, different options like that that are a little easier to carry and a little bit more controlled for competition setting. But there's something special being able to test yourself against something that's this constant. This rock has always been there and will likely always be there for those who come to challenge it. You know, we pulled up today and there it is, fucking just laying on the ground waiting for you to pick it up, you know, almost daring you. It was really cool. You know, I remember seeing that stone uh, being lifted when I was like 14 or 15 in World's Strongest Man in Iceland, which, you know, for me was by far the coolest World's Strongest Man. You had some really incredible athletes and they're in this savage landscape with the geysers and, and the volcanoes and everything. And they had them doing the Husafell stone on this straightaway run. Seeing these guys lift this 420 pound stone was incredible. And you had Magnus for Magnuson in there and, and Ted Vandepar ended up winning it by carrying it the longest. And it just signified everything that was cool about Strongman and cool about Iceland. You know, this here's this this stone that's thousands of years old and has been touched by the strongest guys in history. I got, I got super giddy when we first walked up. You know, we, we, we haven't slept, uh, you know, since 6 a.m. yesterday morning. We flew all night long and uh, we've been, uh, you know, goof around all day and, and finally made it out to the, to the, the goat pen and you, you pull up and see that stone laying on the ground. And, you know, just automatically a switch gets turned and, and you start, uh, the heart starts racing and the, the hair on the back of your neck stands up and, you know, you're gonna do, you're gonna do work today. Basically, the way you want to do it is you're going to stand it up this way. So okay. This so is your bottom. Shape. It's like harp shape. Yep. And so you've got a better, a little bit better handle there under it. Okay. And then this side. So it's. Okay. You know, when you see it, on in videos uh, and on TV, it, it doesn't look that formidable. You know, it looks like a small stone, but it's the most dense piece of rock I've ever touched in my life. And uh, my honest uh, expectation and hope for myself was I'd be able to break it off the ground, maybe get it to my lap. Yeah, it doesn't feel as bad for like a heavy atlas stone. It's just you can't. No, there's no way to fucking get it. It's also super fucking heavy. Yeah. Oh, that's that part, yeah, it's still really good. I gotta at least get it in my mouth. Yeah. I was able to walk, I don't know how many yards with it, but uh, far enough that I felt pretty good about myself when I'd finally dropped it. After watching Mark go ahead and get a hold of it and give it a go, and actually get a successful walk with it, I knew I had to put my hands on it again. Not quite as successful as Mark, still limited by this stupid knee. This does make the third trip that I've been out to the Hoosfell Stone and successfully got it at least into my lap every time I've been out yeah, there. Man. Come on. This trip's been great, and being able to share this experience with another Highland Game athlete who I've trained with and competed with all over the world was another part of it. Uh, you know, I spent 17 years as a pro Highland Games athlete and, and got invited over here and just, uh, you know, never really took the chance to do it. And uh, this year um, we got the opportunity and, and man, I'm so glad that we, uh, we, we took the opportunity and came over here because this is one hell of a place.